everybody doing? Are you guys happy? Yeah. I want to hear some more noise than that. Come on. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> so I think I, I got a cheer from everyone out there. Every, every single person in this room is happy right now, really. Nobody's tired. Nobody's anxious like, wow, okay, I've spent the whole day here at 10. It was awesome, but I have to go study for my midterms. What about inspired? I mean, we have heard some amazing things today. I'll tell you how, I got, how I'm feeling. I'll tell you guys how I'm feeling. I'm really nervous, and I'm kind of shaking a little bit, but I'm really, really excited. So, now that we're all being honest with each other, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Being happy isn't the most important thing in life. I know, I know, it's hard to take in. This information alone can cause you to experience a strange combination of emotions, confusion, betrayal, and hopefully relief. No matter how the media or society or your parents or friends or teachers try to convince you that you should be happy, it's okay to not be happy. You see, the culture of America revolves around happiness. The pursuit of it is written into our Declaration of Independence. Wisely, the promise of achieving it is not. Advertisements, television shows, books, seminars, entire careers are focused on telling the public that they're unhappy and letting them know that that needs to change. It's with religious fervor that some preach that a life that's not lived happy is a life not worth living. However, there are benefits to all emotions, and happiness in itself may not be as fantastic as it's chalked up to be. So depending on the individual, different emotions have varying benefits. To help illustrate that, I'm going to take you on a little journey. Imagine your life is an adventure game. You start out happy, do nothing, and stay happy. And that's a pretty boring game now, isn't it? Now imagine that instead of staying happy, you experience a variety of, mo of emotions that influence your decisions and guide you on your quest. Sadness brings empathy. Your curiosity could bring you knowledge. Your fear could cause you to be more cautious, keeping you safe, while your confidence gives you the boost to complete your quest. And every great adventure game begins with a quest. So let's consider which emotions might motivate one. We mentioned curiosity. Perhaps answering a riddle will start your quest. Love has been the motivator for countless adventures. But there are some emotions that we may not see as positively motivating. For example, anger. So look through history and take out every social movement or revolution. Most of them were born through anger. And the leaders of these movements, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, they were all angry. Now, before you get on me about calling these people, these peace advocates, angry, you have to understand, these people were upset with where they were and what was happening to them. I mean, who wouldn't be? But instead of taking the power they got from their anger and lashing out, they addressed a problem. So, on our quest, we can say that anger is a dragon. Like a dragon, anger is huge and intimidating. It's powerful, and when uncontrolled, not beneficial to anybody. But also like a dragon, when anger is managed, it can grant you the power to lead the world to change. If you're fighting your anger because you can't control it, you can't accept it, you are going to be hit back with it. It's going to come back and eat away at you. But if you address a problem instead of the anger itself, you can really move forward. It's a fantastic motivator, and this dragon will often start your quest if you let it. So, there are other emotions that may motivate you. Say maybe you're really frustrated, or maybe you're anxious. Say you have a test you're not so confident about. Don't you study a little bit harder? On the other hand, haven't you been really confident about a test and then bombed? A little anxiousness may have been your friend. So while these emotions are motivating, what does happiness breed? Contentment, inertia. Happiness is like the empty calorie of emotions. It's great and it feels good, but when looking at the big picture, it doesn't provide much emotional nourishment for a person. Change is generated by fear, force, or pain, not through happiness. 
Like Orson Welles said in The Third Man, in Italy for 30 years under the Borgias, they had terror, warfare, murder, and bloodshed. But that produced Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and the Renaissance. In Switzerland, they had brotherly love. They had 500 years of democracy and peace. And what did that produce? The cuckoo clock. Now, this isn't to say that happiness is unimportant. As you know, happiness is great. It feels so good to be happy. But being pressured to feel happy every single day not only decreases the value of the emotion, but it can make people feel guilty for being unhappy. Say, Happiness is like Christmas. If there were no other day in the year, the celebration would lose all value. If you were happy all day, every single day, the emotion would start to lose its value. An economic term that can be applied to this situation is the law of diminishing marginal utility, which basically says that if you have a whole lot of something, if you get something else of that thing, it'll have less value. Say, you've got 10,000 carats. If someone were to give you another carrot, how much is it going to mean to you, really? So instead of striving to be happy when you can be accepting other emotions, it doesn't make you happier. It just diminishes the value of that happiness that you're trying to get. So in this culture of constantly demanding happiness, we begin to really, really want to reassure our friends. If we see they're not happy, we want to make sure that they, they know that the worst case scenario won't happen. It'll be OK. But reassurance does an interesting thing to some individuals. When you promise that the worst case scenario won't happen, it only reinforces the thought that it would be absolutely terrible if it did happen. So instead of making your friend feel better, you're only adding on a new layer of anxiety. And then if the worst case scenario did happen, how would your friend feel? One of the most popular methods that people use to get happy is to stamp out negativity. A Google inquiry results in about 396,000 results for the words stamp out negativity. So we know it's a really popular method. The thought process is that if there's no negativity in the mind, surely positive thoughts will fill that empty space. That would work if we were robots, but we're not. There's never a time when we're not feeling emotions, so there's never any empty room to fill. So it's more important to embrace negativity as it comes than try to push it away. So if you're unhappy and you're thinking, oh gosh, I really want to be happy all the time, I'm just going gonna, gonna to think, I'm going to be happy today, and then it's going to happen. As you might have figured out, that's not exactly how it works. But Let's try to work out our brains, see if we can master this mental work, make our minds work the way we want them to, with a little game. I challenge every single one of you to not think about a polar bear for one minute, starting now. As I can hear from some of the noises in the audience, y'all are thinking about polar bears, aren't you? So uh, I'm going to stop you before we waste a whole minute thinking about polar bears. So maybe you tried to think of something else, and you were like, all right, all right, all right, yeah, it's been a while since I've thought about polar bears, dang it. <laughs> or maybe you were like, OK, don't think about polar bears, dang it. Don't think about polar bears, dang it. <laughs> There's an interesting theory that lets me know that this is how you're thinking. It's called the ironic process theory, which basically says that the more you try to reach your goal, the farther you get from it. If we apply this to happiness, the more you try and try and kick and scream and try to be happy, the less happy you become. And I believe that the least effective method to achieve happiness is you, you try to motivate yourself and think, yeah, I'm going to get that happiness and I'm going to hold it in my hands because it's a tangible thing and I'm going to be able to keep it for forever and it's going to be great. But as we know, happiness is not a tangible thing. So instead of making happiness the treasure at the end of your quest, why not let it be the people who join your party? Why not let it be in every little frustration, every locked door, every locked chest? Why not let it be in the fun you have and the friends that you make? So now, I'm at the end of my talk. 
and I feel really, really good. I feel so excited. I'm so happy that I got to talk to all of you today. But tomorrow, I could be angry or sad or anything, and that's okay. And tomorrow, when all of you are angry or sad or anything, I want you to know that's okay too. You could be faced by a dragon, but I want to encourage you not to slay your dragons, but to embrace them, harness them, let them join your party, and start your quest. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.